Hello and welcome to the Yee Framework Developers Tutorial Part 2. My name is James Wilson. I'm a member of the Iterative Reductionist team. And in this tutorial, we're going to be showing you one way to set up your development environment for working with the Yee Framework. There are obviously a number of different ways you could do this. We're going to be walking you through one. Uh, we know as developers that setting up and configuring the tools is often a pretty painstaking task and quite frankly it's annoying. So we decided to put this tutorial together in hopes that it would help you start uh, coding with the framework more quickly. There are a number of things we're going to need, the first of which is a development environment. In this case we're going to use Eclipse. If you're not familiar with Eclipse, don't worry about it. The next thing we're going to need is a web server stack so that we can run the code on our local machine. In this case, we're going to be using XAMPP, which is cross-platform, Apache, MySQL, PHP, and Perl. The next thing we're going to be showing you how to do is set up a web host in the cloud. We've chosen Cloud Control because they let you set up a free account, and free is good. Now, this step is not entirely necessary just for setting up a development environment. We wanted to walk you through this now because it's going to come in handy in the third tutorial. The next thing we're going to need is the development kit. We're going to be using the Java development kit. Now we're also going to be showing you uh, how to set up your source control uh, for your code. And source control is something that all developers should be using. Uh, we're going to use Bazaar because it's free and it integrates well with Eclipse. And then lastly we're going to be showing you how to set up the plugin for integrating Bazaar with Eclipse. And then, of course, we'll get to the framework. All right, so let's start with the Java Development Kit installation. What you want to do is go to oracle.com, find the link for Java for Developers, and then what you're going to be looking for is the JDK. And at the time of this video, the most recent update is 24. So I'm going to skip forward in the video so you don't have to watch the long, boring download process. Alright, our download is complete. We're going to go ahead and install it now. Okay, nothing special here. We're just going to go through the typical installation. And the only thing we're not going to do is enable the update tool. And then there we go. Alright, now that that's done, we're going to move on to the next step and show you how to install XAMPP. First thing you're going to do is go to www.apachefriends.org and look for the XAMPP icon. And then what you're going to look for is XAMPP for Windows. And then just click on the download. And wait. And while you're waiting, you can go read a book, go take a bath, Maybe look at some of the interesting advertisements and maybe click a few to generate some ad revenue for SourceForge. Or just continue to stare blankly at the screen in hopes that you can intimidate it to download faster. Alright, when it's done downloading, kind of go ahead and run the installer. Alright, nothing fancy with this install. Uh, make sure that if you're using Windows Vista, you carefully read this message so you can set up your machine correctly, otherwise XAMPP won't work. Okay, uh, we highly recommend that you go ahead and install it to uh, see XAMPP. Feel free to choose whatever options you want here. And then again we wait. Now I sometimes find that if you click and drag on the progress bar a lot, it actually makes your install go faster sometimes. All right, now we got a cool looking uh, command prompt and we're done.
right, from the XAMPP control panel, you can see where you can start your uh, various services. We're actually not going to start any of those just yet. All right, now the next thing we're going to have you do is uh, edit your environment or your excuse me, edit your environment variables uh, so that we can add in XAMPP to the path. And this is showing you how to do it on Windows 7. All right, get to our environment variables. We're going to scroll down until we see path. Click on edit. Okay, at the end of your variable value, you're going to enter semicolon C colon backslash XAMPP backslash PHP. But don't forget that semicolon in there, it's very important. And click OK, 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 and we're done. All right, now that XAMPP's installed, we're going to make a few uh, configuration changes here. It uh, comes with a debugger called xdebug. And in order to get it uh, set up to work, uh, we're going to need to make a few changes to the php.ini file. So what you're going to do is go to wherever you've installed XAMPP, look for the PHP folder, and then look for php.ini. Open it up to edit it. And the uh, best way to get to the first section I found is just to do a, uh, a find, look for xdebug. All right. The first thing you want to do is uncomment this uh, Zend extension, extension line. And you can do that just by deleting the semicolon. How convenient. All right. For the next part, we're going to bring up our good friend the find window, xdebug.remote underscore host. to go through it a couple times here. There we go. You want to look for this line that says xdebug.remotehost equals localhost and again uncomment it. Alright. Next, do a search for xdebug.remote enable. Oops. And it's actually before the line that we just edited. There it is right there. Unco uncomment that. Change it from 0 to 1. Right, stick with me, we're almost there. We're going to go to the xdebug remote handler section. Uncomment that. Last thing we're going to edit is the remote port. And what we want to do here is just uncomment that line. So we're done with this file. Save it. Close it. Right in the last couple tidbits here, um, one thing you want to make sure is that when you're running Apache, you go ahead and turn IIS off if you're running a Windows box that has it. And also, uh, if you're if you've got Skype on your machine, you're gonna have some problems with uh, ports. So we'll go ahead and go through that here, just because we banged our heads up against the wall for a while trying to figure this out. So I want to make sure that you guys don't have to. So we'll go ahead and bring up Skype. We go to Tools, Options, Advanced, Connection. What you want to do is while you're running your Apache server, go ahead and uncheck that and click on Save. Close out Skype and we're done installing XAMPP. Congratulations. Oh wait, one more thing I should bring up. You're going to want to go ahead and start your Apache server. Now you're done.